How many of you remember your first day of high school? Do you remember what you felt like on that day? You might have come to school all excited, maybe a little nervous. You might have been happy because you maybe saw one of your old friends. But then you walk in those big front doors for the first time, and suddenly, you're alone. You become one person in a sea of students. Sure, you maybe knew a couple people, but on that very first day, you wouldn't have known anything about hundreds to thousands of people. You don't know what they like, what they don't like, if they talk or act a certain way. But over time, you, you meet people, and you get to know them, and you hang out with them. So by the time you graduate, or when you graduated, you might go from having known one person to knowing a hundred. For someone like me, though, it's a little different. You see, I have Asperger's syndrome. So for someone like me, more often than not, I'm stuck in what I like to call first day mode. I'm gonna explain what that means, but first, I wanna tell you a little bit about my story. See, so when I was about four years old, I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. If you haven't heard of it, Asperger's syndrome is defined as a lifelong personality disorder, evident from childhood, and regarded as a mild form of autism. No, it doesn't mean that we're all geniuses like Einstein or savants like Rain Man. It's a disorder characterized by difficulty with social interactions and exhibiting a restricted range of interests and or repetitive behaviors. And Asperger's is everywhere now. One in 68 people are diagnosed with it, which actually statistically suggests I shouldn't even be the only person in this room with Asperger's. Is anybody out there? No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> My story with Asperger's is probably not unlike one you may have heard before. When, when I was younger especially, I did struggle to make friends and to get people to like me and want to be around me. But to be fair, when you're six years old and you're, and you're in love with the weather network, it's not really have a lot to go off when it comes to making friends. <laughs> I was lucky though in elementary school because for three years I got to attend what was, what was essentially social skills class. Whereas, like in math class, you learn your times tables, I got to learn all about things like sarcasm and body language and facial expression and so many things that most people don't even realize they already understand. When I hit high school, though, that's a different story. We're talking having to go classroom to classroom, really crowded hallways and lunchrooms, different teachers with a lot more students than me, and new faces, so many new faces. Well, in my school alone, there are over 2,000 students enrolled. That means over 2,000 faces to analyze and thousands of possible conversations to plan for. Well, you might be saying, well, that's crazy. Why would you have to plan for conversations that you don't know are going to happen? But you see, when you're an Aspie, like me, you don't necessarily get the ability to just talk to somebody. I know myself, especially if I don't know the person, I have to stop analyze the situation, analyze everything that's going on to, to be able to understand what's go, what's, what to say next. And that probably doesn't make a ton of sense, so I researched and I found an analogy that I think makes it a little bit simpler to understand. Think about this. If you take a baby, and the baby grows up in Spain, that baby's gonna learn how to speak Spanish just by listening to the world around it. Whereas if you take somebody who's never spoken Spanish, and you drop them in the middle of Madrid, and they're gonna have a problem. And it works the same way. Somebody without Asperger's learns social skills naturally just by listening to the world around them. But for someone like me, going to high school can feel like dropping me in the middle of Madrid. It's a foreign place where I don't know a lot of people and I don't speak the same language. So for someone without Asperger's, for someone from Spain, communicating would be as simple as speaking in Spanish. But for someone like me, I have to look at everything going on beyond just what's being said to be able to understand. And you know, it can be frustrating having Asperger's in high school because you're almost stuck in a sort of no man's land. Meaning, on the outside, you look normal enough because you don't necessarily stick out, like, such as people who have lower functioning autism, that people would think that socially you should be able to act like everyone else. But you're still on the autistic spectrum enough that it's hard to do that. And that's what life often fe would feel like. It still feels like sometimes. 
I'd be sitting in class, my teacher would be explaining an assignment, and because on the outside, I looked normal enough, I looked like I knew what was going on. But I know my, my brain is functioned, so it's set up so that I need to have a physical copy of written instructions instead of just having it verbally explained. So even though I looked like I knew what was going on, well, you know like those, when a computer has too many functions and it goes into overload, that's where my brain would be going like. And I think that's what first day mode that I was talking about earlier is. If you tried to point out the person with Asperger's in high school, you couldn't. Because on the outside, nothing seems out of the ordinary. Just like the grade nines on the first day of high school. They come in, all excited to be there, but secretly, they're scared. Because they don't know what to say, who to talk to, whether they're saying this to this person will make that person upset, and, it, and it's scary. And you have to remember, for someone like me, I faced first day mode basically every day. I wanted to come in and just have normal conversations with people, but I didn't know what to say to them. I was scared, I was especially scared to, tell, to mention at all that I had Asperger's. So what this did was it put me into two separate worlds. On one hand, I had the one world that I showed people, the one through social classes and analysis and observation constantly that could relatively get by socially, basically the one you're seeing right now. On the other hand, I had the, one I, the world I didn't show people, the one that was constantly analyzing and observing and trying to keep up socially with everyone else, the one that was terrified that if anybody knew he had Asperger's, that anybody knew he was different, that that would be it, his life would be over, he'd be an outcast forever, he'd be finished. And you might be saying, well, that's crazy, but because don't, don't they tell you in school that it's okay to be different and don't try and make yourself normal and it's sad to say, but that, 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 that works on a motivational poster. But if we're being honest, in high school, we're all afraid to be different. We're scared of what people we don't know will think of us, and we're terrified of what our friends will think of us. And I think that's why, as an Aspie, I wanted to be normal so badly. Because normal was safe. Normal was a box I could put myself in, closed off on all sides, nobody could hurt me, and I got to keep the friends that I had that I worked so hard to get. So I went along with this feeling for years, until one day, I was sitting in the cafeteria with one of my friends, and I don't remember the actual conversation, but I just remember he turns to me and he goes, hey man, can you believe that? That guy's so autistic. And kids at my school have, talk, have talked like this all the time, and for the most part, I just, I just ignored it. But for some reason, I, could, I, I couldn't tell you why if I, with a million talks, but for some reason, on that day, I decided to say something. So I just, I got, really, I got really angry, and I told him, dude, that's really not cool. Well, I said some other stuff that I can't say here. <laughs> and, he, and he got really surprised, and he goes, what's, what's up, why? And I said, because I have autism. And that was the first time I'd ever personally told somebody about having autism. And do you know what my friend did? You know what he did? He said, that's great and then went right back to eating his lunch. And you guys have to understand what such a simple moment did for me. I was so afraid for the longest time that even just talking about having Asperger's, about being different, would ruin me. But what I learned is, is people don't care. That, that sounded a lot better in my head. No, and I think this is a point that people with conditions beyond Asperger's don't, often, don't realize, often don't realize. Whatever condition or problem or challenge that you, have, that you have in your life that you're not telling people doesn't change who you are to them. Your friends won't stop being your friends just because you opened up part of your life to them. The challenge for you is you have to be willing to help them learn about it. And actually you have to experience this from the other side of that about, about a year ago, because about a year ago, I was speaking, I was invited to speak in a competition, in a speech competition, and I decided to speak about having Asperger's. And after the competition, another kid who had spoken came up to me and told me he liked my story, but he also told me that he, he had a brother who had Asperger's. 
and he didn't understand how to talk to him, so he asked me if I had any advice. So I thought about it, and I thought, what's the one simple thing that happened to me that changed everything? So I told him, just sit down with your brother and just talk to him. Just ask him a few questions. He may say nothing. He may ramble on for 20 minutes about the TV show he saw last night, which might be completely irrelevant, but just knowing that you're there, that you want to listen and to understand, that can be enough. The point of why I'm up here today, the point of why I decided to do this is really simple. Nobody deserves to feel scared, to feel ashamed, to feel alone because they're different. And this is what I want to leave you with today. Just two words. So that nobody has to feel scared, feel ashamed, or feel alone. Talk more. What does talk more mean? It means just taking five minutes out of your day to just talk to somebody. Five minutes. It may seem simple, but just because talking to somebody may not feel like it's changing your life, you talking to them might be what's changing theirs. We all have challenges in our lives, and just talking to somebody can make it so much better. Talking to somebody can make, it, they make them feel like they're wanted, like they don't have to hide who they are to people, because even just for five minutes, for someone there to listen to them, to understand why they feel scared, they feel ashamed, they feel alone. If I can end with this, let's go back for one minute to that first day of high school. What happens if someone in that school sees that little grade nine walking around, scared, not knowing what to do, what to say, and instead of ignoring them, just takes five minutes and just talks to them, helps them understand where they're going, Maybe, maybe introduces them to one of their friends so they know somebody. You know what happens if we take that school and we make it anywhere on earth? And we take our scared little grade nine and we make it anybody on earth? What happens if today you go up to that lonely kid in the cafeteria or the guy at the office nobody seems to want to talk to and just said hi? Just started a simple conversation just taking five minutes to talk to that person and listen to what they have to say. Talk more. It's two simple words, but when we do it, we, we break down those boxes that we build up to protect ourselves because they're not needed anymore, because we don't have to be afraid anymore. Just talk more. That's where I want to leave you guys with today. Thank you.